Welcome to the Stuff and Things Podcast. Your home for all stuff related to your favorite things in entertainment. Now, here are your hosts. time on this podcast, so I'm playing it in full. Hello everybody and welcome to the Stuff and Things podcast. We're talking the Umbrella Academy and that epic music as you would have heard, the phenomenal wonderful theme which i don't think i heard in the final season not once but anyway i am sam discussing the final season of the umbrella academy and joining me to talk through the final six episodes it's my partner in crime it's stefan hey buddy how you doing i am okay but i think we should warn everyone you're a bit poorly sick i am a bit poorly sick i'm okay but i'm a little bit poorly sick so i'm gonna try and like hit mute buttons if i start coughing up again yeah, well, please do that. Um, I, I I can already hear on the audio you, you're you're a bit heavy of breathing, so a few perverts might really enjoy this show. <laughs> I uh, do have a fan club out there. Let's be yeah, honest. Yeah, yeah. So so for every, 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 yeah, everyone who's yeah, into correct. that sort of thing is about to really enjoy this show. Uh, everyone who I hate really the fact that joke probably gets clipped and used by people. Who always. Um, everybody <laughs> who um, really enjoyed these six episodes, I don't think are going to enjoy this show because uh, I, I, I've got a lot to say and none of it's that positive. Um, typically, um, whenever we mean you discuss a TV show, we yep, there there are things we like, things we dislike, and we and we yes. kind of go through it and we and we sort of talk through it and we go, okay, I didn't like this, but you know that wouldn't aim for me or whatever and stuff like that. With this show. Um, we watched three seasons of ten episodes a season, um, with the storyline always being discussed by the showrunners as being a five-season arc, ten episodes, so 50 episodes total. When it was announced that they were going to end it with season four, um, we all just kind of went, oh, well, uh, obviously the viewing figures haven't done it to get it to five, <laughs> but okay, at least, at least yeah. we're getting an ending, which is good. Um, we've obviously waited a long time for it. Yes. Um, when it got closer, they then confirmed it was going to be six episodes, not ten. So straight away, it was like, oh, okay, well, that's you. You really are just like driving off a cliff. Then you're not like <laughs> you're not going to try and stick the landing at all. No, you, you, you're done, and you're you're done. Okay. Yeah. Right. Um, these six episodes gave me Game of Thrones season eight vibes, which is that feeling that the showrunners had stopped caring um there are so many instances where you can see green screen still visible in the shot you can see cameramen camera people visible still in the shot and it's all in the show um one person on youtube counted just over 1000 editing errors in six episodes wow uh, it's in, it's insane the the video you can go and watch it it's on youtube umbrella academy season yep. four errors and the video is one hour 20 long to fit it all in and point to it all god the episodes are only about yeah, 50 to 60 episode, minutes anyway yeah, yeah. yeah but that's six episodes and <sighs> it's just appalling and some of it i must admit went completely over my head the cameraman on the back of a car I think everybody saw that, and that was just like, what the hell are you doing? At the petrol station, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but oh, there's three are, in the car. Why there is there three so the car? many, so many yeah. in there that it's just, oh dear. Um, my, one, of, one of my favourite ones, and I will admit it went completely over my head, is there's a scene later on where Five meets multiple versions of himself in like this little cafe thing in that, in that strange yes. subway. Uh, like yep. parallel dimension, whatever it is, and obviously in that scene we know that's one actor. He doesn't have like 
twenty siblings who look identical to him. I know that for TV and film, they've not perfected cloning, uh, but apparently in the background, you can literally see quite clearly the faces of all the different actors and stuff in in two or three shots, which then, when they go back to them, obviously have been altered. So again, that that went over my head, but it's just yeah, I I just don't get what. It, it, when you when you watch something and it feels like they didn't care, it's very difficult for for me to care. Yeah, no, I I'm the same, and it felt a bit like they had, like you say, they had this plan for fifty episodes. Yeah, they suddenly got told, actually, you no, know, you're only getting thirty six episodes. Yeah, and they've kind of turned around and gone, well, fingers up to you, then, you know. Yeah, Sodja, we had a story to tell. If you're not going to let us tell our story, then, then you we'll, know, we'll, screw we'll, you. Yeah, rather than landing the plane, we're just going to slam it into the ocean. Um, yeah. <clears throat> what I find um, interesting as well is the sheer weight of rumors around problems. And yes, and they they go from cast members being unhappy with certain things to the showrunners outright uh, annoyance and anger at certain cast members over certain things. There's a lot out there, you know, um, Google's your friend. If you're interested, you can go through this and it's really quite kind of like, Oh wow. I'm amazed. They even made six episodes. Like when you read yeah. some of this stuff, like there are, it was not a happy camp. That's for no, sure. There are like uh complaints and stuff filed. You can see out there like th- this could be, this could be things that run and run, like issues between people. Um, and also, I kind of noticed in this, there are certain actors that don't interact in six episodes, really. Like, they kind of get thrust together as, like, a everyone together at the end. But even then, they're kind of kept to one side of other people. Now, I'm not going to go through naming all the names and stuff like that, but... If you watch it, you'll you'll see it. <laughs> there, are, there are quite clearly people who didn't want to be on set with each other or or whatever. Um, and and once you've read the rumor and you watch the episode, you're like, oh wow, actually, yeah, it's really quite obvious. That's really yeah. quite. Oh, okay, they're there's not always in... at least a person well, between them when they yeah, are. Yeah, the yeah, quite shot literally, sort of quite literally. At one point, there is a person between them, and quite often like yeah, they're they're they possibly should interact and, and they don't like they yeah it's it's strange i think uh, i counted and i'm sure someone else is better than me that they had like two lines of dialogue with each other in the entire six episodes and in previous seasons they were kind of inseparable yeah so so that was yeah that that was interesting to me now look uh we are going to take a walk through the story uh take a walk through what we thought at different points um, but first of all, because it's a tradition on the show, we discuss, you know, I turn to Steph and I say, and the title of the episode was, so we're going to do all six. They are cracking titles, if nothing else. So yes. Steph and the title of episode one was the unbearable tragedy of getting what you want. And that the truth. Uh, the title of episode two, Jean and Jean, my only high point in six episodes, by the way, were those characters. Uh, episode <laughs> three. The Squid and the Girl. And episode four. The Cleanse. Episode five. Six years, five months, and two days. My least favorite episode. And episode six. End of the beginning. It's a good song, that. Uh, okay. So, um, episode... Whilst, um, whilst we're doing the um, oh, titles, okay. I have a quick run through. I Obviously, we all know I'm a big IMDb person. You are the um, the ratings for this season. Yeah, uh, the unbearable tragedy of getting what you want a six point eight uh, one point eight thousand people did that one. Yep. Um, Jean and Jean seven point three out of ten one point seven k. The Squid and the Girl six point eight uh, one point five k. Okay. The, the Cleanse six point four one point four k. Six years, five months, and two days got a massive 5.6 yeah. uh, from 1.7 thousand people. And end of the beginning, uh, 4.8, and that was 2.7 thousand people. Yeah. Um, so 
it's not great if you're a person who kind of looks at ratings before you watch a show. Yeah. That's for sure. When the when your season finale, like the end of the show completely, like the show finale gets as high as 4.8 out of 10. Yeah. I, I, and I personally That's think people worry. have been really generous there. On on some of them, for sure, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, that, that's got to be a worry when your ratings are kind of that low. Like season one and season two, most of the ratings are in the sevens and the eights. Well, well, this is the thing they don't care, and it's obvious they didn't care, and that's why people are done with it. That's why it's kind of, you know, and it's such a shame because now I personally really, really enjoyed season one. You did. You dragged me to this show. I drank it. I am the reason you st- we started this one. Yeah, I yeah. loved season one. Season two, with all the time traveling and placed all over the place, yeah. I thought was quite fun and quite ex- interesting. Yeah. Season three was a bit of a tougher watch for me in the hotel th- the hotel thing. Yeah. Wasn't as good as the first two seasons. And then, yeah, season four was just kind of nosedived. Like, yep, okay, we're done. Yeah. And I... I think you managed to watch these most of the season in like one or two days. Didn't you? I did it in a day. Um, you did it in yeah. a day, yeah. Um, it yeah. took me almost a week. Yeah, well, I, I um, see... <laughs> these podcasts would have been out sooner if it wasn't for me going. I don't want to watch it, Sam. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it was one of those things where um, it had come out, and I knew I knew it was only six episodes, six hours, and I had literally had a day to myself. And I needed to not be working. I needed to take a day off. And I, yeah. you, you know me. People who listen might know a little bit of this, but I'm a kind of a workaholic. And every now and again, I've got to like go. Oh, hang on! I need to just switch my brain off because otherwise, I've been going non-stop for like day and night <clears throat> doing different things. So yeah. every now and again, oh, you were hit a wall, <laughs> and, uh, and I kind of like my body forces me to stop. Or my brain kicks in first and goes, oh, before we hit that wall, how about we take this little off run and take a day off? <clears throat> so this was one of those days I kind of went, I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to watch yeah. TV. I'm just going to shut off and snack, you know, not even eat meals, just kind of have a day grazing. Um, That's it. Don't you wish you'd worked? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, so I did it, um, and I watched them all in a day. Like, started in the morning, finished at night, um, and I... Yeah, I wrote my notes, and and the funny thing is, is I do this is when I'm watching shows, I don't overly want to write anything overly. I don't want to write anything in detail. Yeah, <clears throat> and the reason why I don't want to do that is because I I then be looking at the notepad, not looking at the show. And you want to watch the show first, yeah? Yeah, I want to I want to enjoy it. So typically, if like something gets said, I think oh, I need to flag that. I'll write that down as like a small note. And then when it comes to actually recording the podcast, I put all these notes. I try and put everything I've put together into some sort of running order that's logical to talk about when we do the show. So in essence, yeah. I'll write a page of scribble and then put it into some sort of format later on. Somehow you'll be able to read it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, and that, that's often a problem. So I then went to put this together into some sort of discussion for the show, and I, and I realized I've got a page of A4 for these six episodes written as notes and on that page of a4 i've got nothing that i i i'm like oh that's interesting let's talk about this i've literally just got statements of facts i am one page of a4 of so and so did this uh so and so did this now i do yeah. i do have a few things and a few scenes that i want to talk about because they were fun um, so we're going to do that, but I, I yep. yeah, I, I genuinely, when I sat and looked at it, I thought of all, of every single show we've ever done, the only show that comes close to this where I've really struggled with my notes was The Walking Dead World Beyond, which when whenever we'd watch an episode of that and I'd write my notes up afterwards, I'd be like, I've watched 30, 40 minutes of a show and nothing happened. Like, yeah. this group of people walked from there to there, there were some zombies... Um, this teenage angst thing that that was it. It was like I was, I felt like I was saying that every episode. Um, yeah, as we discussed when we did that, it just wasn't aimed at us, it was aimed at people far younger who are 
experiencing teenage angst all the time, whereas older, I'm just looking at it going, God, that's annoying. Um, yeah, come on, why are you doing that sort of yeah, thing? Yeah, so, we're so, it was a teen drama. So, so in yeah. a way, this is kind of unique, because this isn't a teen thing. This isn't, like, filled with teenage angst in that way, where I can look at it and go, clearly, it's just not aimed at us. This show very much was aimed at us, comic book, older, you know, because it's, it's not a young person's comic this this is this is adult no. this is material which is way beyond and so it's a strange thing like to to watch a show for three seasons 30 episodes to have a real good grasp of everything for it all to get shaken up like a snow globe at the end of season three to leave you on this like cliffhanger of like oh my god what happens next to yeah. then have oh i wish i never found out it's, it's a weird feeling um, so, yeah, so one of the things for me was they brought Ben back for this show. Like they they didn't bring Ben back; they brought the wrong Ben back, was didn't they? But we had Ben, who was a character who we knew from the first few seasons through Klaus. We knew all about Ben, and he was there, and he was quite funny. We then get the wrong Ben, so to speak, coming to this season. Yeah, and at no point in this entire season did I connect with that character once. No, um, and it gets to the finale, and you're like, "Oh my god, Ben's gonna die!" And I'm like, "Yeah, and okay, yeah." I mean, probably I mean, deserves it, it actually. I mean, it's <laughs> like, it's, diff- it's difficult because, um, like like you said, the the kind of Ben actually was one of the major plot points to all of this, and I I can understand the arc that they took with it, but we had no real like because there's a six year time jump so from the end of season three to the events kicking off in season four six years have gone by yes now when you do a time jump like that obviously people are going to have progressed things have happened in their lives etc and yep i can speak for me in the real world you can speak for me in the real world six years is a long time and a lot can change god yeah now we have so just to just to do this so after this six year time jump five's working for the cia which suits him down to the ground lufer yep. is a stripper squatting he did like his dancing yeah yeah uh, diego is a delivery man married to lila with kids ben has been yes. in jail for like fraud or whatever um yep. uh, my, fraud or my, there, my yeah. note here is ben was in jail ghost ben was much nicer uh, Klaus is now sober, a germaphobe, and is a complete safety nut. I mean, it was amusing, but at the same time, that's a hell of a difference, like, character-wise. Yeah. Um, Alison is a failing actress, despite basically doing all of this to be successful and a star. She's ended up not doing anything. Failing, doing wash commercials, And yep. Victor is a womanizer running a bar. And and you kind of you're like okay so these six years we know that they didn't have their powers in this timeline or whatever but like okay six years is all of this has happened and we as the audience don't see events don't see time go by we don't see how they've got to this point we're just kind of thrown in and saying these characters that you've known enjoyed with their abilities and all of their sensibilities all of their feelings of right and wrong these characters that you know and understand for three years are now different and that's Every always, one of them yeah it's always a very difficult thing to like wrap your head around and when you're doing it in six episodes it's quite a kind of like oh wow okay so literally yeah. episode one i felt like my head was spinning with this kind of why is he doing that why is he saying that why are they why are they like that you know why are they you know, like the perfect yeah. example for me is Diego and Lila, which is they were very much falling in love with each other. And when they all arrived in this place at the end of season three and no one had their powers or anything like that, they looked at each other like this kind of brilliant me and you can just go and live our lives. We don't have, you know, I mean, they they looked at each other, they wandered off together very happy, very in love, very kind of like, this This is perfect. Six years later, they are married with kids. They are kind of living that dream, if you like, of where they were, but now they're desperately unhappy. 
Yeah, they're yeah. they're kind of bored in normality sort of thing. Yeah, which which I can which I can get when you consider their backgrounds. But yep. it just kind of it is very difficult to, to catch up to all of this stuff. It's very difficult to be like, okay, madly in love, madly in love, a title card says six years later, oh hang on, they don't seem to actually like each other now, but they're married yeah. with kids. What the heck happened? Yeah, so yeah. It's, so it's 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 difficult. Um we we get to kind of see um this group called the Keepers, um, which main people behind this are Jean and Jean. Uh, two very good actors joining the show to to portray these roles. Very quirky. The show's always it, been very quirky with every character, and and, and I like. Yeah, this. it took me far too long to realise who uh, the actress of female Jean was. Oh, really? It's Karen from Will and Grace. Yeah. Uh, well, it took me so much longer to work that out. I spent these for like the first couple of episodes going, I bloody know that face. Really, uh, really know her. You, and then you, I had to search it. You, I was like, what out, a grace. You out yourself for your TV habits a lot. You know that, right? Yes. Yeah, when Willing I was grace, growing up, it was like my mum's favourite show. It was my mother's favourite show growing up, so it was always on in the background. Yeah, that's that's acceptable. That, that okay, you can keep your man card for now. Yeah, that's fine. Grey's Anatomy, on the other hand. Yeah, no, <laughs> you, you start talking about that show, I just disintegrate the thing. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh. The the, the interesting thing with that, and see, this, this is the thing I guess which disappoints me a little bit, is the whole intro for episode one. Everything that's going on, I'm just kind of reeling a bit. Like, okay, trying to get my bearings of who everyone is now. They're they're getting the wise. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sort of wrapping my head around it. The introduction of the keepers and they've got evidence of different timelines and stuff like that. I'm like, okay, that's really interesting. That's yep. kind of like this you know, imagine if these conspiracy theorists that are out there in the world that we know actually were holding evidence of all of this stuff. Like and that's what this is. This is a group of what we would consider absolute conspiracy theorists, but they're right. Like they yeah, are the like ones they've got evidence this. of yeah. the um, the video cover. Yeah, of the two different actresses, exactly the same movie and something. They're like, aha! Now this this I, made that was interesting. This did make me think. Right in the real world, there's this thing called the Mandela effect. Yes, and it it did make me think of that. It did make me think of that in terms of there are some people who are just con. Convinced, and I mean convinced that this is something that's happened to us in the real world, like timelines and stuff. Yeah. Because they believe they remember things differently. And a lot of people collectively remember things. I'm like, yeah, I get isn't it. it the, um, the Monopoly man with the monocle or not yeah. and stuff like that. Isn't it? All There's, that loads. Sort of thing, yeah. There's loads and loads and loads. My favorite one's the Fruit of the Loom logo. So um, Fruit of the Loom logo uh, with a bushel in it is when people show you that, it looks like the Fruit of the Loom logo. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But Fruit of the Loom have never had that in their logo. And they've, like, posted online their logo through the years. It has never been there. However, there are people who then post in replies Fruit of the Loom t-shirts with that clearly in in it, like old, old t-shirts. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. (laughs) Well, Fruit of the Loom just basically said, well, clearly people have ripped this off and they're fakes which yeah. which, which is fine and like it but it does it does make me think of this it did maybe they think came of... through from a different wearing that t-shirt yeah, exactly. that's how they got out there exactly man exactly so it is it made me think of that and i, I quite like that i thought okay that's that's going to be interesting um yep. and we see uh victor get kidnapped by a guy um, who seems to be the worst kidnapper in the world. Yeah, the the laundrette. Yeah. yeah. Um, now, <clears throat> this is the main story for these six episodes, okay? Yes. The main story for these six episodes is that Abigail Hargreaves basically was mad at Reginald Hargreaves over what he did and bringing her back to life. And rather yep. than sitting down with him and saying, I think this is a terrible idea, 
she <laughs> she sets, decides to end the world. Yeah, yeah, she sets everything in motion to end everything, <clears throat> kill everyone. And it's like the whole premise of this is just like so okay. I mean, I, I know the Umbrella Academy has always been off the wall. But... It's, it's far fetched, yeah. It's always been a bit whoa, but. So we do learn that this kidnapper and, you know, is basically her wearing another person's skin, which. Yeah, that, that was like the reveal at the end, wasn't it? Whoa. Yeah, that was kind of really messed up in a lot of ways. And it was also one of those things that, like, until that happened, yeah, I I had no idea. No, like, no, but also I did, did have you a care? clue in it. Not massive, and that's, that's about... the issue. Like I like that reveal should have been like, oh my god, wow, that's amazing, and it happened. I went, oh, that's kind of gross. Yeah, oh, she's wearing a human skin. Okay, yeah, yeah, just like oh, that's kind of gross. I, I don't. I'm not bothered, really. Well, she's, she's... Yeah, ripping. Like, there was some bits of it that was like, it was gross. Like, she's ripping the bones and the organs out so she can literally yeah. wear the skin. And I'm like, that's disgusting. Yeah. And then I'm like, also like, it would really smell. Yeah, there, there's there's no logic to it. Now, no. None of our group have got their powers, um, but they investigate... Uh, being kidnapped, Victor being kidnapped, and basically Five finds this box of all this stuff and says, right, we're leaving. They all leave. They sit down in a restaurant and Five reveals that he's found basically a jar of marigold. They could all have their powers back if they wanted them. Uh, They have a vote. The vote is no. Ben calls them all idiots, goes off, takes the marigold, and basically spikes all of their drinks. Yeah. Except for Klaus, who is clean and sober, so doesn't drink the shot, he fakes it. Yeah. The rest of yeah, them fair enough. The rest of them nail their shots and they get their powers back, but the powers are all a little bit different. What did you think about that? Because that you could take that in one of two ways. One, you could look at that and go, oh, okay, like you know, slight different timeline, slightly different impact. Or you could just say, oh, they've now got powers that benefit them in this moment. That's lazy writing. Yeah, it's difficult because when... So, like, Alison's main power was the whole I heard a rumour. Yeah, and she never said that once. Doesn't do it once. No. However, also, never tried it either. No. Like, if if you've taken this weird mixture that's going to give you your powers back... Yeah. And... Everyone's powers are a bit different, you know, apart from Luther, who turns back into the ape man. Oh, don't don't get me started on that, because that's not his power. And that was like, okay, so that's now him again, right? Okay. His power, I always thought, was like, you know, super strength and all this sort of thing, yeah. great. But actually, no, his superpower was he turned into a monkey, which was actually incorrect, but that's not the point. Yeah. Um Surely, if your power for all these years had been the I heard rumor thing, yeah, the first thing you do is walk into a shop and go, I heard a rumor you were going to give me all the money out of the till, yeah. And when they look at you and go, What, yeah, and you just have a go, Ah, well, we would have told you that's a dumbass, okay, thanks for letting me know, yeah. Um, Walk out, ah, well, you know, but she doesn't even try it. What, like, there's so many scenarios. Where it would Where's make my sense. brother? I'm not yeah. telling you. I heard a rumor you told me. Exactly. Yeah. I heard a rumor you took me straight to him. I heard a rumor you dug him up. I heard a rumor yeah. you went and walked into a motorway. Yeah, but she no, doesn't no, use doesn't the do power. Doesn't even attempt no. to. No. No. So um, that Klaus, Klaus that pretty much the has show. the same powers. The whole talking to the dead. Mm. So Klaus has pretty much got the same powers. And he gets them back on very much unwillingly. Like, he yes. doesn't want that anymore, uh, but he gets shot, and they give it to him to save his life, which I can understand, He's pissed. but he is pissed. Like, he would rather have died than do this again, become yeah. immortal. Now, again, this is interesting. So all of them have basically got their powers back in a way. Diego's pretty much nailed on just even more enhanced, like... He can now, like, he was delivering parcels and was basically throwing them from a moving truck through their people's letterboxes and stuff, which I knew he was good. With Quite stuff. cool. But yeah. that was, like, enhanced beyond belief. 
Yeah, and I did think <clears> that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. It was cool. But just to touch on this Lufra thing then, because the actor who plays Lufra has done a lot of press to try and promote the show. And yes. someone actually asked in the question saying, how come you reverted to that monkey body state when a uh, gorilla, in essence, that wasn't your ability and that was an experiment that was done on you, which is separate to the marigold effects. And he said, oh, I asked that question myself because I, I thought the same thing. And I was basically told it was a good visual. And everything's a bit different. <laughs> I think that, I think that just I think that just sums it up. It, that's it, the nail in the coffin, isn't it? It just, looks good. Yeah, it's just kind of like that's how little they actually cared for their own continuity that they created. So it's very difficult to to care about anything they did. Um, <clears throat> the main story arc then is this girl called Jennifer, and this girl called Jennifer was found in this timeline in the belly of a giant squid as a young girl. And then she grows up, and Jean and Jean and all these people in the Keepers believe she is going to bring about the cleanse. Get them all back to their timelines. Get them all back to their yeah. correct timelines. In a way, they're correct. But we basically find out that when Reginald, whoever created Marigold and all this stuff... There was like, if you think of this as like mass, matter and antimatter, it was yeah. kind of here's the marigold, and then there's this other thing, which this girl is is like full of or whatever. And if they should ever meet, boom, end of the world kind of thing. Uh, Umbrella yep. Academy typically there was always the end of the world thread going on. Um, every season, end of the world. Every yeah. season, every season, and and that, that's okay. Um, then. Ben and her have this kind of like draw to each other. Now, what's interesting is we then learn how did Ben die? And there was this little thing in this, which I actually, this was probably one of the few things in the show. I thought, oh, actually that's, that's quite good. That is obviously something that was a plot line all the way through because it was only when they, they challenged, how did Ben die? I suddenly realized that for three seasons, we never knew how Ben died. No, it was never even mentioned. But they all did parrot that, you know, we didn't, you know, we didn't work together, you know, it, it was good. And I think earlier seasons, we all kind of thought that's kind of like a trauma response. That's yeah. like, you know, or they're all, they just don't want to talk about it. It was so horrible, so hideous. And so that was a plot point I found really interesting. Right up until the one thing that I thought kind of destroyed it, which is Klaus every single day spoke to the ghost of Ben. Why yeah. would the ghost of Ben at no point say that son of a bitch shot me in the freaking head and wiped all your memories? Um, yeah, fair point. You, you again, so I liked the, the stick in the landing and everything, and I liked that that was built. And then that is just the most awful error. Like, just now, now, once they revealed it, I was like, I was like, oh, I wonder how he did die then. Is, why, why was it so terrible? Their minds had to be like, this is what's happened. He got shot by Reginald. Okay, hang on. Why on earth wouldn't the very first thing bed and, and you know, you see. Klaus with all these dead people and they've got the, the wounds of how they died and stuff. Ben shouldn't have a big friggin' hole in his head the whole time he spoke to him. Or Jesus, or, yeah. Okay, if he didn't, all right, fine. But would Ben not have been like, well, one minute I was saving the girl and the next minute I was dead because someone shot me. And yeah, he'd I like, got shot. Who yeah. shot you? Um, yeah. Dad? I don't know. It, it came from behind... However, the last memory before it all went dark was hearing, you know, was hearing dad's voice or whatever. Just, it should have been something. You know, that would have been the first thing, surely. You know, like, hey, ghost of Ben. How, you know, and Ben yeah. going, why don't you remember how I died? Like, yeah, why you asked it. How can you still be working for that man? He killed me. Yeah, how are, how are, no, how are none of you talking about how I died. Why are you all acting like brainwashed zombies? I died like this. So it's, 
Again, yeah. they possibly could have sold this given more time and possibly could have dripped in. Like, you know, Ben did try but gave up because Klaus just, you know, was Klaus. There, there's lots and lots of ways possibly, but it just feels very illogical when you think about the amount of stuff Ben did reveal as the ghost and the amount of stuff he did talk about. It just doesn't, it's not right. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's a massive, massive plot hole right there. It is. It like, is. that's such a big plot hole that I genuinely hadn't even realised. Yeah. Because that's so freaking obvious. It's, it's, it's a crater, <laughs> not a hole. That is yeah, a huge... Yeah, but that's so obvious. And I'm like, yeah, I didn't even think of that because yeah. it's so bloody obvious. No, so I'm just going to pick out a few things from the season that I, I find fun or kind of funny. Yeah. Um, I I really liked the scene where Diego and Luther went into the CIA. Um, the guy was kind of showing them around. Yeah, this is the elite division. Is clearly just all the people who have had enough working yeah, their way towards now. retirement. Um, and they end up in this like crazy fight scene, and the people they've been in there with, like the people who have had enough, end up helping them, which was just kind of funny. The guy, he's trying to eat his lunch, but yeah. handing over the rock chicks. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so so that, that was kind of an amusing scene. Um, I, I like that. Um, and another thing, right, again in the show, this, this isn't something I like, but it's just something that was like, what the hell? One of the main reasons why we ended up in this reality was Alison. Alison made the decision to hit the yep. button everyone was against it but she did it anyway and the reason why she did it is because she did a deal with reginald to basically be living the life as an actress with her daughter <clears throat> and yet in this six years later she's a failing actress and she basically spends hardly any time with her daughter who's completely aggravated with her all the time Yep. Yeah. Uh, again it's like you follow this character and you have this vision and you have this kind of understanding of who they are and what they want for her to screw her entire family and hit that button we understood it is okay all she was thinking about was her daughter in that moment okay she's such it was a all about claire yeah, okay. okay okay we can and then it's like oh actually you don't you don't give a shit actually you're you're just kind you're of more interested in being an actor then. Yeah, and that that was actually all right. So your motivation, which we all thought we understood, actually wasn't there. Okay, fine. Um, like I said, there's loads of things. Probably one of my favourite things, which is such a stupid ass thing, was the group on a road trip being forced to listen to Baby Shark. Oh, um, see that. <laughs> That was doing my head in because um, my my youngest, my little baby one, yeah. um, nursery had literally the week this came out. Yeah, her, her little nursery group had introduced her to do 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 shark. Yeah, so she was running around the house constantly going do 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 baby do 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 shark like nice. constantly, which meant that's what she wanted to listen to. So all I'm listening to. When I'm not at work, I'm going home and I have Baby Shark playing because that's all she wants to listen to. Yeah. I then sit down in the evening to watch a TV show and Baby Shark starts and I'm sitting in my chair <clears> like a little bit of a twitch. Yeah, <laughs> like, I get that. I can't escape this song. I, I, <laughs> I, I, think, I, I think I had escaped it long enough that I found it funny. I also I, thought, I found it very amusing because I can imagine like that is like my worst nightmare as a parent. Well, it's torture, just, just hours and hours and hours. Baby shark, do 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 baby. Shark. I mean, it was just and the funny thing was you could see a couple of them were almost like singing along to it by the end, like yeah. their brain had become mush. Yeah. Um. <laughs> there was also the fact the whole tang turned into like a mad group of killers working for you know. Um, Hargreaves Industries because they basically had that Jennifer there locked down. Yes. And that was a fun. I mean, that was carnage and fun. Um, like the Santa running down the street with the two uh, assault rifles being knocked over by the baby shark playing. You know, it, yeah. was, it was funny. And I, I kind of had hopes after that scene of like, oh, okay, 
they might not be nailing this landing, but at least it's going to be kind of funny. It's going to be kind of fun. Uh, but that scene was kind of the highlight for that, for me, anyway. Um, yeah, I, I think that the whole thing with the town was probably one of the better yeah, moments, yeah. for sure. Like, there was a few bits in I got there was a few bits in this that made me kind of snigger and a bit of a chuckle here and there. Like the odd line thrown in that kind of makes you go, <laughs> yeah, yeah, sort yeah, of thing. Yeah. But nowhere near the level of the previous. Yeah, I mean, is there anything that kind of stands out to you that we've not already mentioned is something that you, you enjoyed, something that was like, oh, actually, I like that scene or that sequence was fun or whatever? Um, it, it, No, not really. No, honest. no, no, it's fine. Um, I, 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 was just about to, I was just about to bring out the fact that the thing that kind of really killed it for me, which was the storyline between Five and Lila. Yeah, see, I was about to mention the whole the train journey thing. Yeah. Um, was very, very, very strange. Like, it started off, okay, they're kind of trapped down here. They need to find their way home. This could be interesting. Like, how are they going to find their way back? What are they going to do? This could be interesting. No. Um, And then very quickly, very quickly, my brain kind of went, no, wait a minute, I can see where this is going. This isn't right. Yeah. Don't take it that way. Please don't take it. Oh, they they took it that way. Right, so so let's just park that a second. Yep. Have you ever seen the thing, it happened in the Big Bang Theory, where they talk about Indiana Jones and how... Um, if they had taken the, the boulder scene away, nothing would have changed. So yeah, if they had taken no, oh, no, 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 take no. Indiana Jones out the story, yeah, it's exactly yeah, yeah. the same. Take, take Indiana yeah. Jones out, and then that is find the arc, open it, or die. So he doesn't actually play a role in the thing. And it's kind of like every fan went, oh yeah. Bloody hell, that, that is kind of, right. yeah, and then, yeah. and then as Raj pointed out in the Big Bang Theory, yes, but he grabbed it afterwards, catalogued it, and put it in a warehouse like a boss, like, so it's kind yeah. of funny. Now, I want you to actually generally think about this, because I, I'm, I could be wrong, but imagine you take the Five and Lila and that whole underground train thing story away, right? Yep. What impact does it have on the story? Absolutely none. Abigail Hargreaves still gets Jennifer Fang, still creates the cleanse. The world ends exactly the same way. Whether they, the the way they kind of back sold that storyline was with the final scene with all the fives. And he had this realization, oh, the only way to actually stop this from just keeping happening, happening, happening is for all of us to die. But he did that by himself on the train, so they could have kept the train stuff in it. Well, no, no. But if they you... just didn't need that entire episode of them to... For... No, you, you don't even need it at all. If you take that away, if he never realised that, they were still going to end up dying because of the cleanse. So then the same effect would have happened. Did you see what I mean? Yeah. Like, like there was no escape in it. There was no fight in it. They, they, were, they were doomed. They were dead. He just told them, "Oh, well, at least by dying, we'll, you know, we can just die together at the yeah. same place instead of all over, golf yeah. and our own things." So it made no, it, like, it literally made no difference at all. The, <laughs> the only thing it did thing is was yeah. create a storyline where a brother fooled around with his brother's wife, which is I don't I didn't like. Like I don't like no. that at all. I don't see how Five would ever do that to any of his siblings. I just beyond me. Yep. And when you take when you take that storyline of that and just park it over to one side for a minute, because Lila again, I, I don't see that personally. But okay, you got to remember as well. We watched two to, to into three seasons of her wanting Five dead. Like that yep. was her mission on the world was to kill him and and stuff. So. All right, fine, right, we're going to accept this happening. But now let's just go from an actor's point of view. When the the guy who plays Five, who was 20 when they filmed this season, sorry, 19 when they filmed this season, he's 20 now. Yeah. He was 15 when they started this. And yeah. Lila was 30. 
So she has yeah. known him since he was, and now he's got to be romantic, kissing scenes, stuff like that. I just said no. Like, I don't think that's okay. I, I don't genuinely, like, I, I swear I could be completely wrong and people listen to this and say, oh, no, it would have been fine. But you swap their genders, a man that age and a, and a girl, I don't think anyone's okay with that. I think people would have rioted over the show doing that. Yeah, the whole the whole thing was just freaking weird. Like, like you said, even if you just keep it purely on the storyline side of things, five doing that to Diego, and I know the argument will be, yeah, well they were they were just the two of them, last people left alive for six years, surely eventually, sort of thing. But no, I'm not. I'm not buying no, that. No, no, it's just. <laughs> It was just weird to watch. So like, I quite quickly cottoned on to what was about to happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, don't do that. Like, come on, they, you don't need to do that, please. Yeah. Come on. But you kind of knew they were going to as well. It, 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 also, like, oh. it also steers into that ridiculously lazy thing of a man and a woman cannot be around each other without it being sexual or without there being, like, it can't be platonic ever. Yep. Like they, they couldn't be like that is his brother's wife. That is, you know, and they are struggling to get back. That couldn't be platonic. You're telling me they couldn't be close and look after each other without it going over a line? Like that's that's such bullshit to me. And, it, and I it hate is that it. stereotype, the ultimate stereotype for man and a woman cannot be friends. Yeah, and and it's bullshit. Yeah, <clears throat> it is bullshit. One of my best friends out there is, is a woman, and we've known each other since we were at school together. And it has always been and always will be a friendship. And yep. so it aggravates me. It is lazy, yeah. and it doesn't do anything for that that kind of stereotype. It doesn't do anything for anyone. Um, <clears throat> like I said, I was picking things out, and I was kind of doing things and 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 stuff i mean i don't really and i know i don't really have a lot more to say overly i was just incredibly disappointed with the final season of the show i don't think there's any point dwelling on it more than what it is it is done the showrunners clearly didn't care you only got to look at the sheer amount of errors that they just yeah put it out we don't care Um, and that's one of those things we've spoken about with a lot of different shows like this show it gets filmed, it gets kind of watched through and edited. You then have to go through it on the editing to try and get rid of any errors. You sometimes have reshoots. Like there are so many opportunities for oh, it's a bit of an error there. We can yeah. get rid of that. Yeah. So many opportunities. And like you say, that guy found like hundreds. A thousand. Over thousand. over one thousand errors in six episodes. That yeah. Are, and- that are visual errors. Um he, he even and again, there's a lot I missed. But when I've looked, I looked at the clips and was like, "Oh crap, yeah." There's even errors like in dialogue and and a few times people spike in the camera. So it's it's like they got their lines wrong, realized, but they've just left it in. Yeah. So and it's like, yeah, that says to me that they didn't care. No, no, they didn't. And it is frustrating because it was a show I enjoyed. It was very off the wall. It was very niche. Um, a very small amount of people. It's probably one of our least listened to podcasts of all the shows we talk about nowadays. So it was a very uh, close knit group that we had quite a, a strong interaction with. So um, a kind of apologies, really, that I really didn't enjoy. It would sound silly, but uh, one of the things on the podcast I always try and do is keep it authentic and keep it kind of. I'm not ever going to fake enjoying something like so. I got accused of that a lot. Out. Like the Star Wars The Acolyte, I, I got accused of faking that. And it's not. I genuinely enjoyed that show. Yep. I, I'm genuinely sad they're not going to make more. So when it comes to this, I have genuinely enjoyed the show right up until, like, you said season three was a hard watch. Season three was okay for me, but, like, the ending blew my mind. Kind of like, I don't know where this is going to go. That's really interesting. But at that point that happened, we all thought, okay, well, we got more coming or we got a lot more coming, but it just, yeah. Uh, overall, there are bits and pieces from these six episodes you can point out and kind of say, okay, that was fun, that was good. But yeah. it's six episodes of just, like I said, not landing the plane, but just slamming it into the ocean. For me, it just wasn't good. 
and it actually kind of leaves me with I'm kind of glad that's done. I don't have to watch that again. Yeah, which is a real shame because like I say those first two seasons, particularly, yeah, <clears throat> they were fantastic. Yeah, and like if, the season one, I watched three or four episodes of season one. I was like, dude, we need to watch this. We need to talk yeah, about it. This is this yeah. is brilliant. And I to then you. kind of and to then kind of end how it's ended, it's kind of like oh. Almost like a bit of a sour taste. It is. It is literally that. It is a sour taste in your mouth. And it is, it's, it's just bitter disappointment because there is so much there with those characters and the abilities that they had and all the different things that made it so interesting. And it just kind of... Yeah, I mean, uh, Klaus becoming a medium to pay off a drug debt, there was a little bit of amusement in that. But at the same time... Where did that lead? Where was that going? What was the point in that? Um, there, there isn't one. Nothing. I, I can, I no, can, there is absolutely nothing in that yeah, at all. There was no addition aspect to his powers that came from it that you went, oh, okay, he can do that now. Okay, and he had to learn that he could do that now. That's interesting. But no, it just nothing literally... Nothing changed at all. No. The only thing you could point to is the fact that Allison's always going to be there for him, no matter what. But we knew that that this this wasn't this isn't brand new information. This is Klaus going off the rails and Allison reining him in. Is we've had yeah. that. that that's literally a thing we've seen from day one, and it's and she even says it in the thing. Oh, this is how we this is what we do. We're family. Yeah. So there was no, again, so there were so many things in it that were kind of, okay, that's kind of cool visual or whatever, but it's like, well, what a waste of time. And, and I feel I feel for the actors as well because um, I think they realised it wasn't good. I, I think you, you can look at some of the performances compared to the previous seasons and it feels like they knew it wasn't Oh, the good. acting definitely felt like it took a step down. It just kind of felt like they were there going, oh, really? we got to finish this, you come want, on. You want me to do what? Oh, fine, yeah. Now, yeah, yeah. Like, now you've said it, I'm actually thinking back on Klaus's whole storyline. Yeah. Nothing at all Klaus does in any way, shape or form impacts anything. Nope. Him getting his powers back, it saves his life, but... It saves his life, and then, yeah, he goes off and gets kidnapped, but no one actually comes to rescue him. No. It's only once he's buried in the ground doing something with the ghosts that we knew he could do already. Yeah. All that happens is Alison finds him, digs him up, and then they go to the house and all die. Yeah. yeah. You could genuinely take out the entire family <laughs> apart from Ben. Yeah. Whose character I didn't care <clears throat> for the entire season yeah. because he was just a bit of an arsehole. Yeah. But if you took all the rest of them out, it doesn't change the show at all. No. Ben Ben comes through, he meets the girl, he takes the, the marigold stuff, they touch each other, they start the cleanse, the cleanse happens, the show ends. Yeah. The family don't have any relation to it at all. No. Holy crap, what have we just watched? Thank you very much for listening, everybody. Um, that is our show discussing the Umbrella Academy, the final season. If you enjoyed it, I am incredibly sorry if you've tuned in and you feel really disappointed and you feel like, oh, you've just pointed out loads of stuff and that's annoyed me. Um, I'm sorry. Genuinely, genuinely, I would never, ever want to take someone's enjoyment from something. So if you enjoyed it and you loved it and you're, you're, well, like, you're thinking, oh, that's wrong, you... You're right. Like, literally, you're right. It is an opinion-based thing. This is just my opinion, Steph's opinion. If your opinion differs, you are right. Because it is just Trust opinion. Me. Yeah. It is just preference. So please don't feel that your enjoyment should be lessened because we've pointed stuff out and we didn't enjoy it. Which I'd like to think wouldn't happen anyway. But just, just no. wanted to say it. Um, we will be back very, very soon on this podcast. Uh, the Rings of Power, Lord of the Rings series from Amazon returns for a season two. We will be back discussing that show, and then very quickly after that starts, the Marvel series, Agatha All Along, um, which is going to be out for the Halloween season. Yar. 
Yeah, you, did you do that like a pirate, or is it mimicking I, me? Arr, arr. No, no, I, was trying, I don't know what I was trying to do. I was trying to do something Halloween-y then. It just came across as... Oh, no, no, that was fine. It, it sounded like you're from my way. That's good. <laughs> uh, so I want to say a big thank you to everybody for listening to our show, talking about the Umbrella Academy from Season 1. Uh, it is our most uh, sort of smallest, more niche audience. Um, if you've stuck through it all the way and really enjoyed it, it's such a great... Do get in touch with us. You can contact us uh, via email, sam at stuffandthangspodcast.com. You can contact us via all the socials except for Instagram because Kaylee lost the password. Uh, but until, ne- until next time, when we're talking about the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power series, you all take care. And that is a season and show wrap. Thank you for listening to the Stuff and Things podcast. We hope you enjoyed the show. You can find us on Facebook or online. Simply search the Stuff and Things podcast to join in our conversation every week.